everybody. Alaska Fred here again. Oh, been a long couple days. But hey, that's what happens when you're a vampire. You get some long couple days. But it's all good. Yeah, I'm just uh, stuck at work again. So I thought I'd jump back on here and talk away. You know, I have, I've had this idea for a while. Uh, for uh, you know doing while I'm doing the gold prospecting and stuff being the fact I don't have gold claim I gotta be able I gotta find the gold wherever I can find it mostly I've been working in areas that uh, uh, would be classified as recreational gold prospecting areas and unfortunately there's a lot of rules. Oh yeah, a lot of rules you got to follow. One of the rules is you cannot use what's called a uh, a trommel. Uh, they look at a trommel as uh, intent to mine and whatnot. And in order to in order to get a permit so you can run the trommel the intent to mine permit actually getting that permit is fairly easy but without a gold claim it does you no good because even if you do have that permit you can't use it in a recreational gold mining area go figure but then uh, you get those, uh, <laughs> you, you, some bureaucrat or something made it to where um, they don't want you using a high banker in some of these places. I'm like, what? Why? What's wrong with a high banker? All a high banker is, is a combination sluice box classifier together. It's all it is. I mean, it's all it boils down to be. But they, <laughs> the, some bureaucrat out there came up with the idea, oh, it puts too much uh, soot into the water. You know, it messes with, messes with the fish in the water. Really, guys? Whoever came up with that idea has probably never been gold prospecting or gold mining in their life. Because same same stream that you can't use that high bank in. You can use a sluice box. And <laughs> I'm sorry, you put just as much uh, soot or you know silt or soot or whatever they want to call it back into the water anyway using a sluice box. It's just one more step where you got to classify your material down to run it through your sluice box. I'm like, are you fucking kidding? <laughs> some of these, you know, some of these bureaucrats, I don't get it. But, you know, that, that's neither here nor there. But it just, it, I never understood. You know, I, I guess I can understand the trauma and whatnot. And I haven't built one yet, but, uh, I got, you know, I got it set in my head how I want to build one. Um, I've watched some YouTube videos on how to, you know, on how people's built theirs. Uh, a couple of them were like, hey, that looks fairly simple and easy to do. I mean, heck, there was one guy I saw on YouTube, you know, my just a while back, and I just haven't gotten around to it. He built one that's hand crank. Yeah, it takes a while to run them. I mean, on, if you're hand cranking it, you know, no big deal. Most of them run off of uh, either an electric motor or a gas-powered motor and whatnot. I mean, you know, if you run off an electric motor, you got to have batteries and whatnot, a uh, way to keep your batteries charged, which is not that hard. You pick up your, you know, 
<laughs> you pick yourself up a deep cycle battery, hook a uh, solar power charger to it, and that sucker, you know, as long as it's long as it's light out, it'll charge that battery. Duh. But you know, then you get, you, know, you, see, you get the people that run gas engines. So then they got to keep up with, you know, they got to have the gas in order to run those engines or those motors. You got to have, um, then you got your maintenance. You got to keep oil in it. You got you to do this. You got to do, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, that would be a bit much. But, you know, like I was saying, you know, the one guy with, had the hand crank one, it takes a little bit longer, but it's like, hey, that works. Or you can always, uh, you can always recruit the slave labor. Like, uh, in one of my videos I did, uh, you know, making Frito pie and stuff, you, you recruit the slave labor, the daughter, or the son, and whatnot. You make them hand crank it. Oh, you dump dirt in. Yeah, makes sense. But, you know, my idea about building this trommel, see, I found a loophole. And I think I'm, I found a loophole that I think I'm going to uh, uh, exercise this year. And I'm probably going to be doing as much gold, rec as much gold prospecting as I can this summer and whatnot. But one thing I'm going to do is I have a bunch of five gallon buckets and whatnot. Granted, I've also got a bunch of cat litter, empty cat litter containers. Unfortunately, they're kind of a rectangle square, so a classifier is a pain in the butt. I haven't made a classifier that would work in that, but I'll, I'll figure something out with that. But, but you see, my uh, my brain tells me take all my go, take all my uh, buckets down to the down to the creek wherever I'm working. And go ahead and uh, you know, running a sluice box. Once I find an area that might be that might be producing okay, take or even if even if I don't want to take my sluice box down, just take take the buckets down, uh, classify it down to a certain certain size, and then take those buckets and put them back in my vehicle. Fully loaded with, fully loaded with dirt. Then go home, and you know, assuming I I build this uh, hand trommel that I'm thinking about doing, uh, I run them through there to get it classified down even more, and whatnot. You know, do this all at home because I've already you know I still working on my recir recirculating sluice box which I've just about got all the uh just about got all the parts I need for that and whatnot so that'll work but um but my idea here is when you go home and you re and you run all this material well guess what after you run through all this material you have a bunch of leftover gravel and dirt and stuff what are you gonna do with that well, considering where I'm moving to, um, it could just kind of be thrown off on the property. Ain't gonna, ain't gonna be missing. You know, ain't, no big deal. And then, uh, you can take the gravel and uh, in the winter time spread it, uh, spread it on the, uh, on the business area and whatnot. That way, cars and people aren't slipping and sliding all over the place. That's one use. Ah, uh, that's one of my ideas. My other idea is, with the amount of dirt that I could end up with, I may go down and buy, uh, uh, like burlap bags and shovel the gravel in the burlap bag. And, you know, once you do that, then you seal them, which I don't know how to do just yet, but that, I can figure, I'll figure that, I'll figure out how to do that. But, um, you seal it up, uh, each one of them weighs 
weighs between 55 and 65 pounds, depending on what how big the burlap bag is. You know, you know, but they all they're all close the same weight. And ah, uh, put them up for sale. It's free dirt for you, or free dirt for me uh, to go through my Seuss box and you know whatnot. Uh, and then the gravels and whatnot can go into burlap bags and be sold for uh, vehicle weight, you know. Or if some you know if someone wants to buy them and you know open up the burlap bag and use it for their own uh, you know traction in the winter time, it works. You know, like I said, it's free to me. It's just a matter of going and picking it up and then running it through my through my system. And instead of just letting the dirt pile up and pile up and pile up and whatnot, then you just ah take and uh, you know sell it off or use it for uh, like I said road gravel. Or there's another possibility, but it would take a lot of time and more dirt than I can get in a season or two. <laughs> uh, plan to have a shooting, you know, uh, an area where I can, I can shoot. You know, just taking take that all that dirt. And gravel and whatnot, and build a build a mound, mound of dirt and gravel. That way, when you're shooting, you uh you're shooting into the in the mound, and after every every so you know, every season or every other season, you go back there with the bobcat, you uh, dig into the uh, the mound, and you then you dump it into a. Uh, into a classifier again, dump all the stuff back into a classifier, and you pull out all the lead from shooting. And then that way, you can either do one of two things. You can either one, sell lead off, or two, reload. See, there's logic here, thinking. But uh, I don't think I'm gonna do that with the excess. I think I'll, I'll end up using it for selling or graveling the uh, main area. Plus that you don't really get, you know, once you gravel a main area, come springtime like it is now, uh, you sweep all that gravel up, and why not, boom, put it all in one place, it's there for the next year, or you bag it up, because you're going to start all over again anyway. Yeah, so that's just kind of my little talk right now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, cut it here. I'm almost at 13 minutes, so. All right, if you like this video, please hit the like button. If you want to subscribe to my channel, please do. Could use some more subscribers. If you want to comment, give me some ideas. That'd be much appreciated too. I'd love to read your ideas. Maybe I'll put my two cents worth in. We can have a uh, we can have a better discussion about how to do stuff and get around the bureaucrat stuff. Who knows? Maybe between you and me, we can come up with all kinds of interesting stuff. So, all right, everybody. This is Alaska Fred. You have a good night. And I will talk to you later. Bye, everybody.